backdoor play he caught open and that's 13 for smart tied again 63 all now we're down to crunch time every trip critical for these two teams. Coleman's the guy that would like to have the ball, but they're not finding him. Douglas got the roll. Nice, soft touch on that particular shot. And he's doing that right over Smart. So these two athletes, Douglas and Smart, putting on quite a show with their ability to go inside. Trish taking Hillman. Smart cuts again on the inside. And that time, Cycli was there, and the orange come away. On roll for the three. He was off balance. Missed it, and Thomas caught it, and here's Alford breaking free in a foot race with Monroe. You don't see a senior do that very often, Brent, but what happened to Monroe, he knew what he wanted to do, but he was not in the proper balance to get off that three-point shot. That is the first two-pointer for Steve Alford tonight after seven threes. Headlocked at 65. We have 16 fouls on Syracuse and only five on Indiana. Yep, Hillman on a slap. They had one to give. Uh, was he in the act of shooting as he came up? It's going to be a two-shotter. So a uh, summary of this game as Trish, the co-captain, comes to the line. Look how well Syracuse has shot. But they have turned it over. Alford with the seven threes and one two, and Coleman yanks down 18 rebounds. A magnificent college basketball game. Two times, man. You know, last year when this man moved Addison to guard, it kind of took off the chemistry that Syracuse had last year. Now he's back to his normal position. And I think the chemistry on this ball club is so much better. Syracuse hitting 60% from the field here, or from the free throw line. 9 of 15. There is their 10th. So they're 10 of 16. Indiana, 6 of 10. Off the cut, it's smart again. You know, they may have to make a change and put Trish on him because he's going right over the top of Douglas. The matchup is tough. Keith Smart here in the second half, and now it's Derek Coleman short on the shot. And a strong rebound by Smart. He has taken over here in the second half. 11 of his 15 points in this half. Offer tied up. Wanted Smart. Got it taken away by the Orange defense. And Douglas comes away with it. Would you believe the move? Syracuse leads. What he did, Brent, he faked the behind-the-back pass, and that just froze the defender. Keith Smart wants that ball. He's open. Coleman out there all the way on Alford. And a foul called. Now watch this. He'll freeze the defender. He looks at the defender, fakes like he's going behind the back, and do you see Hellman? It almost cost his feet up. Great play. They hit the ball. There was no personal. The man open is Thomas, and this time we get it. Cycli takes him down his third. Ronnie Cycli has played a long time without picking up that foul. Billy, take me back to Knight's two other championships. You were there in Philadelphia when he won his last one, and before that, the unbeaten team. Was he pressed like this with about two and a half minutes to go? No, not at all. He won those games two going nine. away. They were tight for, the, for about a half, and then Bobby Knight's teams just turned it on, and they won really easily. And that game in Philadelphia, they took North Carolina apart. And in 1976, even with Bobby Wilkerson going out in the first game in Philadelphia that they played, Indiana was just too strong for Michigan in the second half. This is a much, much tougher road to try to get his third and put him even further along in history, matching becoming only the third man to win more than two. Adolph Rupp and John Wooden, the other two men, obviously. Cycling open, Garrett's pushing. What 
happened to Garrett. He got on Cycli's back. Now he's been doing a good job all night, but that time he was down much too low. We'll see this right here. Cycli's got him way down low. Now Garrett's been pushing him from behind all night, but a great job by Cycli to put it up inside. And four fouls on Garrett with Cycli at the line. To complete the three point play. Another one. 19 rebounds for Derek Coleman, the freshman. And what a critical one that was with Syracuse up by two. And they get another 45 on the clock. Well, two points can't bother you, especially if you have offered on your club. Timeout will be called by Beheim. Now that leaves Beheim with only one timeout. And 142 left in regulation. We'll be back. <laughs> 142 left here in regulation. Syracuse leading Indiana. Timeouts left for Jim Beheim down to one. Knight still has four. Both teams into the bonus situation. And in a jump ball, Syracuse would take possession out of bounds. We have two players with four fouls, one on each team. Trish for Syracuse. And Garrett for Knight playing with the four fouls. Both players are on the floor for the stretch. When I mentioned that two point lead, when you've got the great three point shooter by, like Alford, that can't bother you too much because you can get that one back. Clear out. Douglas. Douglas. And Indiana was there defensively. Garrett comes away. Surprised they attacked so quickly. They had 26 left yep. on the 45, and they went right now, and Smart comes back at the other end with a driving layup. 17 points, 13 here in this half. Tied at 70. Now Garrett switched over to play Coleman. They've got Thomas playing on Cycli. Bobby Knight switched men. Thomas tried to draw the foul. Trish oh. gets it to fall, and inside of a minute, Syracuse leads. That ball almost was under the rim and just worked its way over the top. Remember the end of the half? It was an offered three that gave Indiana a one-point lead. Now he's got Trish on him, the taller man. Jimmy Beheim making a lot of great moves. Smart off the penetration, couldn't get that one to fall, and Trish coming away with the rebound, and he will be shooting. You can't fault Smart, though. That was a good shot, Brent. He put it up on the baseline. was one of the keys at the start of this ball game foul shooting by Syracuse we'll and see if they can hit them they have been way above average here in the second half they have against Knight hit seven of nine from the free throw line now Knight wants one of his four timeouts this is what you call icing the shoot seconds to go for a national championship and you can see Elaine Beheim could not even watch Howard Trish shoot that free throw as her husband's team battles to win number one for the school and Brent Indiana very seldom presses but here they go full court he wanted to foul on Thomas against Cycli but he got the ball right away to the freshman and they will put him on the free throw line good strategy by Bobby Knight Fouls immediately. This has not been one of the strong points for Syracuse. Bobby Knight would rather have the ball in his hands. No clock, no shot clock on anymore. For Indiana, Only two seconds tick away with Garrett replacing Isle. Gives him a little bit of rebounding down here at the free throw line. Coleman, eight points for the game, two of three from the line, 19 rebounds, and Knight will attempt to ice the freshman. That'll leave both coaches with one timeout in 28 seconds. We'll be right back. Syracuse 73, Indiana 72, with Syracuse coming up to the free throw line. And now two men become enormous stories. Derek Coleman, the freshman from Detroit, will be shooting one at one, even if he hits both of them. Even if Coleman makes both of these, 
Indiana has a chance to tie. And that means that Steve Alford, who is at 7 of 10 from three point range, will be the man they'll try to free. He has scored only two points in the last 11 minutes. So we come down to two of the key personalities in what has been a great championship game here from the Superdome in New Orleans. He's short. Indiana can win it. And he decided to put Douglas on offer. And they go man to man. Smart takes the shot. Oh, it's and the Hoosiers with three seconds. Go ahead. Nobody stopped the clock. Nobody stopped the clock. But the clock did stop at the one second mark. Syracuse with a timeout. Keith Smart with 17 points in the second half has moved the Hoosiers to within one second of a national championship. Right now, let's go back to what Billy Tubbs. We'll see the shot right here. Good dish. Gets the bat ball back out to Smart. Now remember how much time he spent on the bench. There's that great leaping ability and he drills a super shot. Let's go back to what Billy Tubbs did and see if Jimmy Bayheim will try a similar play. And that is to go ahead and see if the man will touch the ball on the guy who's out of bounds. Also see if they'll run the baseline screen to try to draw a charge against Indiana. And if you're Syracuse, other than that, you've got to go all the way. And there's Bobby Knight moving on into history. He wants to know where the clock is stopped immediately. He wants to know how many seconds will Beheim have to work with here as the lead changes hands in a great college championship game for the 18th time. And against Beheim, it was the young man from Baton Rouge, Keith Smart. He brought agony to the face of the Syracuse coach who said why couldn't you have stopped it before I needed at least three to get this going. Now Knight explaining how he wants to set up. He's only up by a point. Now the other thing Brent there may be a little bit more than one second on the clock so you have time to go the length of the court. Bobby Knight calling a timeout. He's not sure exactly what he wants to see. He, he wants to take a look at what Syracuse is employing out there. He'll go back to go ahead and reset. Billy, I want to quickly follow up what you said because I'm sure that confused somebody when you said more than a second. You tell everybody what you meant by that. Well, the, the game doesn't end until the horn sounds. So you may see double zero up there, and there'll still be some time left. When I talk about time, I'm not talking about centuries here. I'm talking about split seconds. We saw that in the, in the Illinois Purdue game earlier this year with zero on the clock, but the horn had not yet sounded in the key ball game. And if you're Jimmy Bayheim, I think you've got to use all the alternatives that, that Billy Tubbs did. Because that long pass, the length of the court, may not be all you can do to win it. second away and remember that Indiana as a school is four and oh in NCAA championship games night unbeaten in two of them surprisingly Bobby Knight does not put Garrett on the passer I thought he'd put Garrett on Coleman to prevent the long pass but he guards puts nobody on Coleman here it goes Indiana wins the championship Keith Smart is the hero 